Hey guys, what's up? I'm here with my Uncle Todd. We're here, here to watch the game with BYU against, uh, who else? UMass. University of Massachusetts. Nice. All right. The game's in like uh, an hour. Yeah, okay. See you. I haven't been on that field since I was on the marching band in high school. Really? I think it's been longer than that since I've been down there. Yeah. Uh, in our ward growing up, the guy who used to manage the field, Brother Williams, I can't remember his first name, would take us here. I think that's the last time I've been here when I was like 14. On the field and stuff. Yeah. Let's try out what this uh, chicken sandwich tastes like. The prophecy is true. the marching band. Looks like they brought out the cannon. So they brought out the cannon. Yep. That's the George Q cannon. A what? Stadium at the foot of the beautiful Wasatch Mountains on the campus of Brigham Young University for today's matchup between the UMass As is customary at Brigham Young University, we will begin today's event with a prayer. The prayer will be offered today. And today is John Stanley Welch, who was born in 1920 in Jerome, Idaho. He reported for active duty on December 7, 1941, Pearl Harbor Day. John was deployed to Europe, where his units defended the railroads from German bombing attacks. After the war ended, John helped organize transportation home for wounded soldiers. After his military service, John went to Harvard Law School. He married his college sweetheart, Unida, on base in Fort Stevens, Oregon, and they recently celebrated their 75th wedding anniversary. John has served as bishop of his ward in La Pinata, California, and he and his wife served a mission in Hawaii. As a 97-year-old World War II veteran, he still enjoys golfing, hiking, and skiing. Joining, joining him on the field today is a small portion of their growing posterity, which will soon number 100. Ladies and gentlemen, firing the cannon, John Stanley Welch. Lighting the wine today is Paul B. Richards. After graduating from BYU, Paul practiced dentistry in Oregon for 21 years. As a new dental school grad in 1971, he took out two loans. The first to put, purchase season football tickets and become a facility donor at the Marriott Center, and the second to buy food for his family and pay rent. Since returning to Utah, Paul has missed only one of the 272 home games BYU's played. He's a Legacy 5 donor in the Cougar Club, and in his nearly 50 years of giving, he served on the Cougar Club Board of Directors and commissioned the famous quarterback factory painting by Chris Hopkins. He and his wife Margaret live in Salt Lake City, and Paul is the proud father of five, including four BYU grads, and he has 22 grandchildren. Paul, we thank you. Now please, like that why.
Casali. And number 81, Adam Brenneman. Jesse Montero depending on the play.
Okay, so I just got myself a cougar tail for me and my uncle. Uh, what these things are is basically one of those, uh, one of those donut bars. But this one's been like made longer by a foot. Let's see how this tastes. Goes out of bounds in the end zone. It'll be a touchback on the 25-yard line. First and ten, Cougar. 